Hello, everyone. Okay, so uh, let me go directly to describing the problem. So in this work, we uh, studied the problem of proving in zero knowledge and under standard logic assumptions that large committed integers satisfies certain algebraic relations. Okay, by large integers, we mean uh, the committed integer x, y, and z are of uh, arbitrary polynomial besides L equal to uh, poly of n where n is the security parameters. Okay, so we consider uh, the following relations, addition and multiplication relations, where we have a committed uh, integer x, y, and z, and we want to prove that x plus y equal to z over the integers, or x times y equal to z over the integers. We also consider Rand's um, relations, where we want to prove that committed uh, integer x belong to uh, a range alpha beta, where alpha beta may be uh, public or hidden. And uh, we also consider set non-membership uh, argument where we have a public set uh, and we want to prove that our committed integer doesn't belong to that set. Okay, so uh, the problem uh, is um, interesting in uh, the context of cryptography protocols when we uh, we do some um, operation with uh, large integers and we want to uh, ensure some privacy preserve in features. Okay, for example, the, the range arguments may have application in context of uh, anonymous credentials, um, anonymous cryptocurrencies, and uh, e-voting, so on. And set member, non-membership arguments may have application in uh, blacklisting where you want to, to prove that your key um, does not belong to the list, a given list of uh, black, blacklisted keys. Okay. The problem uh, has been uh, receiving considerable attention and uh, many, many solutions have been given and uh, some of them are really efficient. For example, the, the protocol by Kuto, Beaters, and Boshevan in Eurocrypt last year or the set non-membership uh, argument uh, system by Bayer and Gross in Eurocrypt uh, 13. Okay, so but uh, these um, existing solutions are on based on num number theoretic assumptions like uh, discrete loss or strong ISAs, and they are vulnerable against uh, quantum adversaries. So it's uh, reasonable to investigate the problem uh, based on uh, alternate um, assumptions like, uh, that are quantum resistant, for example, lattices. Okay, so let me consider the problem in the lattice testing. In this testing, however, the problem is still open. Okay, let me discuss a little bit about this. Um, for instance, if we were to use uh, the existing uh, zero knowledge proof system uh, in ideal lattices to prove uh, that we have the x, y, and z of polynomial bit size that satisfy the additive relations. Okay, so uh, the known technique required to prove uh, this addition of modulo sum q where Q is um, exponent, up, uh, exponent uh, solely large, okay? And um, f then each uh, element in ZQ uh, have to be uh, represented by at least L bits, and each ring element that we that use for the commitment scheme would cost uh, thousands of L bits, okay? As a consequence, uh, to prove that the additive relation, and also we have to prove uh, that the integer x and y are small with respect to, to q because uh, we have to ensure that no reduction mode q occurs. Okay, so uh, on add up, so we need uh, a protocol with uh, communication costs, um, hundreds of thousands of uh, L bits. Okay, so that would be very, very inefficient. Uh, additionally, um, such a protocol would require very strong assumption, for example, the approximation factor in the, for the underlying uh, ideal lattice problems had to be uh, at least uh, sub-exponential. And um, uh, moreover, uh, ensuring soundness for such kind of protocol uh, will be uh, non-trivial because uh, if we use uh, rejection sampling technique, for example, then the soundness property is uh, only a relaxed uh, soundness. And then uh, it's, it's um, not clear how to define soundness in the setting of uh, this testing. Okay, so um, for regarding rank proofs, so uh, we, uh, we only have uh, some um, uh, limited form of rank proof from lattices, for example, proving that uh, a, a committed X belongs to the range from zero to two to the M minus one for some M, okay? And uh, um, there's no efficient non-membership argument from lattice in known, okay? Okay, so uh, our results is as follows. So we uh, provide statistical argument arguments for relation among committed uh, integers 
and the very much uh, assumption in general lattices. Okay. Um, in our protocol, integer of this side, uh, of polynomial this side, are committed via the cis based commitment scheme by uh, Kawachi, Tanaka, and Sagawa at age group uh, 08. And um, we only require very small modulus, uh, that's a po uh, small polynomial modulus Q, and uh, we require on a relatively weak uh, assumption. That's the SIVP, gamma is half for, for gamma around sub O of square root of L multiplied with N security parameter. Okay. Uh, our addition argument has communication cost uh, zeta plus 20 times L times kappa, where zeta is the cost of proving knowledge of a valid openings for the commitments, and uh, kappa is uh, the number of protocol repetition in order to achieve uh, negligible soundness error. Our range argument has uh, communication cost zeta plus uh, OL of uh, time kappa for range size, uh, range of size 2 to the L, so it's the uh, logarithmic in the size of the range. Mm. Similarly, uh, our uh, non-membership argument is also scalable, which uh, communication costs uh, logarithmic in the size of the set. And um, for multiplication, so uh, we have a variant of the, the protocol that achieves uh, sub-quadratic complexity in both the communication, uh, uh, communication and computation aspects. Okay. Okay, so now let me uh, discuss our ideas and our techniques. Okay, so uh, our main idea is to view into the addition as binary addition with carries, and then through the in zero knowledge that the operations are done correctly. Okay, so uh, by working with binary strings, so we, we can work with a uh, small modulus and can work with uh, can work with a very uh, weak assumption. However, proving that uh, the binary additions are done uh, with carries are done correctly is uh, not straightforward at all. So, um, in fact, uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, this approach is quite natural, but it had uh, never been uh, considered uh, in the context of zero knowledge previously. Okay, so um, so let's uh, let's just look closely how um, how the the addition would carry is going on. Suppose that we want to add two bits uh, x and y, would carry in bit uh, c in, and we obtain uh, bit z, would carry out uh, c out. So here is a table expressing uh, how the, the values of the bits um, vary depending on uh, x, y, and c in. Okay. So we can observe that uh, the, uh, the big X, Y, C in, Z, and C out are related uh, as follows. Uh, it's a um, capture by two equations, modulo two. First, Z equal to X plus Y plus C in, mod two. Second, C out equal to uh, X times Y plus uh, Z times C in plus C in, mod two. Okay. Okay, so uh, now, Let's look at uh, the protocol for, for addition of the, the L bit uh, into the X, L bit into the Y, and uh, L plus one, and we obtain L plus one bit into the Z, okay? Uh, so for every I, we, uh, we will denote by like a C I plus one, the, the carry out bits of the I addition. So um, based on the um, observation, so we can obtain, uh, we can express the whole addition by two L equation mode two, okay? So this is, we obtain a system of equation where we have some linear term, xi, uh, yi, zi, and some quadratic term like x, xi times yi and uh, uh, zi times ci. Okay, so, uh, oh, sorry. So recall that we, uh, we also have to prove that uh, the, our integer x, y, and z are committed uh, via the KTX commitment. Okay, so um, the relation between the commitments, the public keys, and the committed bits, and the randomness of the commitments can be uh, expressed by uh, some equation most Q uh, uh, that are linear over the, the bits x i y i z i, and um, and uh, the randomness are uh, K J. Okay, so now our goal now is to prove in zero knowledge that we know the secret bits x y x i y i z i, the carry bits C i and the commitment randomness bits such that on the equation mode two and mode q hold. Okay, to this end we will use uh, the stern light techniques. Okay, so let me now recall the, the stern light techniques. Okay, so, uh, uh, so 20 years ago in crypto, so Stern pro proposed um, a zero protocol for the syndrome decoding problems. Okay, so uh, that's in the context of code-based crypto. 
So the main idea is to use random permutation to prove some constraints of the secret, secret witnesses that satisfy some matrix vector equations, okay? So the idea has recently adapted into the lattice testing. So um, recall that we have to prove that uh, the knowledge of some secret bits and the knowledge of some products of two secret bits. So let me now recall uh, the, I, the technique for handling the situation that, that was proposed in uh, previous work. Okay, so uh, for handling secret bits, so we have the following techniques. For any bit B, so we denote by uh, B bar, uh, the, the bit one minus B, and we define uh, the, vec the two dimensional vector X2 of B to be uh, B bar and B, okay? And then for any uh, bit C, we, uh, we define some permutation uh, depending on C that transform uh, a two dimensional integer vector V V0 and v, uh, V1 into the vector Vc and Vc bar. So basically, if uh, C is zero, so it skip the arrangement of, uh, of the uh, entries of vector V. If C is one, so it swap the, the two coordinates. Okay, so we have observations so that this vector V is a, a correct, a well-formed extension of the bit B if and only if the permutic vector Pc of V is the correct uh, extension of the bit B plus C mod two. Okay, so uh, this, is, uh, this equivalent is very helpful. In fact, it helps uh, us to prove knowledge of uh, cyclic B, cyclic bit B that may appear in several uh, correlated equations. How to do that? Okay, so to, to do that, we, uh, we first extend the bit B to the vector extend two of B, and then we sample a uniformly random bit C, and send the permutic vector to the verifier, and convince that, okay, the left, the right-hand side of the equivalent holes. So the verifier should be convinced that the left-hand side holes would uh, in turn imply the knowledge of some, uh, some, uh, some bit B, okay? And um, the verifier should not learn any additional, no additional information about uh, the bit B because here we have uh, this, uh, the bit C that uh, acts at a one-time bat that completely hides uh, the bit B. Moreover, if we want to prove that the, the bit B appear in two different equations, we can use the same one-time bat C in, uh, in these two places. Okay. Okay, next, so um, here is the technique of proving that we have a product of two bits, okay. Um, for any two bits, uh, B1 and B2, we, we, we denote, uh, we define some uh, a vector of uh, dimension four, it's called X4 of B1, B2, that uh, has the entries like this. The first one is uh, B1 bar times B2 bar, second one is B1 bar times B2, third one, B1 times B2 bar, and the last one is B1 times B2. It's a uh, binary vector of like length four, and which is an extension of the product B1, B2, okay? Next, for any bit C1 and C2, so we define a permutation uh, associated with the two bit, such that uh, it transform uh, a, a vector of, uh, an integer vector of length four in a specific way, such that we, we, we can obtain a similar equivalent like before. That is, um, uh, we have vector V is a correct extension of two bits, B1, B2, if and only if the permutic vector is the correct extension of two bits, B1 plus C1, and uh, mod two, and B2 plus C2, mod two. Similarly, so this equivalence will be helpful for proving knowledge of product of cyclic bits, B1 and B2, where the, the bits, the Z bits, can appear in other equations. Okay. So let me now go back to, uh, to our uh, protocol for integer additions. So using the permuting techniques, we can prove that all of the secrets in our equation mode two and mode Q are well formed. That, are, that include the bits X, I, Y, I, Z, I, C, I, and R, K, J. Also the bit products X, X, I, Y, times Y, I, and uh, Z, I, times C, I, okay. So we also have to prove that uh, the, uh, the equation uh, mod two and mod Q hold. Uh, to this end, we will transform all the equation into just two equations. One is uh, uh, equation mod, zero, mod two, and one is equation mod Q. And then we use uh, the user random masking uh, technique with a uniformly random vector over Z2 and Z, ZQ, and convince the verifier that uh, some uh, equivalent uh, equation hold, uh, mod two and mod Q. Okay, so that is how um, our uh, argument for integration works, okay. Once we have it, uh, when we can handle the addition uh, relation, 
of a non-negative integer. In fact, we can uh, easily uh, obtain an argument system for inequality and for range. For inequality, for example, if we want to prove that x uh, is less than y or equal to y, then we can instead prove that there exists a non-negative integer z such that x plus z equal to y over integers. Okay? If the inequality is strict, then we prove that um, there exists a non-negative z such that x plus z plus 1 equal to y. So in both cases, it's just um, additive relations. Okay, so uh, uh, if we can already handle inequalities, then uh, range proof is just follows straightforwardly. To, to prove that um, x uh, committed into the x belongs to a range alpha beta, uh, where, okay, so the, the, the interval can be inclusive or non-inclusive, alpha beta can be uh, hidden or published or whatever. So uh, we can reduce the problem to proving two inequalities. So uh, x uh, is uh, less than, uh, is um, greater than alpha and x uh, less than beta, for example. Okay. Okay, so next, um, I want to discuss our uh, argument for set non-membership. To do that, we will use, we use our technique for RAND arguments, and we need some additional techniques, okay? The problem is that is as follows. We are given a public set uh, consisting of m elements, s1 to s m, uh, order in increasing order, and uh, where the, 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 the quantity of the set is polynomial in the security parameters. And uh, we want to prove in zero knowledge that we have a committed integer x that does not belong to this set. Okay. okay, so the target is to, uh, to obtain protocol and good communication costs uh, logarithmic in the set because um, uh, that will be scalable for, for set with, uh, with large cardinality. And in fact, um, obtain protocol and good linear com uh, complexity in M is uh, quite trivial. Okay. okay, so to do that, we uh, process follows. First, we uh, append, the, 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 we add two more elements to the set says uh, uh, S0, uh, we see the, 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 the element consisting on zeros, and S, Sm plus one, we see element consisting up on one. So the element indicate the, the, the smallest possible and the largest possible integer of a given length, uh, respectively. And um, after adding these two elements to the set, so we will prove that our committed integer belong to an interval at j to at j uh, plus one for some j, okay? So uh, that can be done in two steps. First, we prove uh, a range argument. X belongs to the interval y, z for some y and uh, some z. Second, we will prove that the y, z are in fact elements of the set, of the extended set, okay? And they are consecutive. Okay, so uh, to this end, we need, we need some structures, uh, some additional structure uh, and additional techniques so that we can uh, achieve um, com complexity logarithmic in the cardinality of the set. So that is uh, w where we use a Merkle hash tree. Okay, so um, without loss of generality, we assume that uh, m plus two is a power of two. Okay, so uh, in this way, we can build a Merkle tree, a Merkle hash tree uh, based on lattice over the uh, element of the extended set, and we prove in knowledge, uh, prove knowledge uh, of two tree parts uh, from the leaves, y and z, to the root of the tree. So this thing can be done uh, with um, a technique um, probably by the same set of authors in uh, Euclid two years ago. And uh, the tree structure allows us to obtain argument of uh, logarithmic size. Okay, so uh, next we have to prove that y and z are consecutive uh, set elements. To this end, we prove that the two tree parts are in, in fact consecutive. So uh, we, we, we prove that uh, let V and W be the integers corresponding to the binary string indicating uh, the two parts, and we prove that V plus one equal to, to W. So that is just uh, one uh, simple integer uh, addition. Okay, so finally let me discuss our arguments for integer multiplication. Okay, so the tag is that to, to prove that uh, we have committed uh, L bit uh, integer S and Y, and a two L bits integer z, and we want to prove that x times y equal to z over uh, integers. Since we already have uh, the, the technique for addition, so if we apply the school book uh, multiplication, multiplication algorithm, then uh, we can, uh, can uh, carry out the multiplication via the L addition. And in this case, we can obtain protocol with uh, communication costs uh, quadratic in uh, 
in the mid lane of the, the, the witness, okay? So this is a straightforward solution, and it's, uh, I think it's suitable for practically interesting values of, of L, like L's uh, S mode uh, 8000, something like this. Okay, so here we are interested in a theoretical question. Can we break the quadratic barriers? Okay, so um, in fact, to the best of knowledge, all of the known protocol either had um, quadratic uh, complexity in uh, the com communication aspect or in the computation aspect. Okay, in fact, if uh, we have some protocol that uh, is qu subquadratic in both aspects, then it will imply some subquadratic multiplication algorithm. So to this end, it's good to start with some uh, subquadratic uh, multiplication algorithm, for example, the Karasuba algorithm. Okay. Okay. So um, suppose that uh, x and y are of uh, bit, uh, bit length L, and then we can divide. First, we can divide x and uh, and y into two two halves. X x one x zero and y one y zero of length L L over two. Okay. Then observe that the um, the product x times y can be computed via four partial products, x1, y1, x1, y0, x0, y1, and x0, y0, where the length of the, the witness now reduced uh, uh, by a factor of two, okay? So uh, this process can be recurs recursively done until we reach some base, okay? And uh, in this way, the, the algorithm will, will have uh, complexity uh, quadratic in L, okay? So Karasuba's observation is that uh, in each step, the number of uh, partial products can be reduced from four to three. Okay, so he has some clever combination of this one, and uh, and and eventually we can uh, he can work with just three partial products: x1 times y1, x0 times y0, uh, time y0, and x1 plus uh, x0 times y1 plus time y0. So. Uh, doing this recursively, so uh, the algorithm will have a complexity uh, O in uh, O of L to the power log two of three, which is subquadratic. This is in fact the first uh, subquadratic multiplication algorithm known. Okay, so our method is to emulate the Karasuba algorithm um, uh, in the process of multiplying x and y, and we prove that the result in fact give us the committed integer z. Okay, so that, that is, we just uh, follow, follow on the step on the algorithm and prove that each step is done correctly. So as a result, we obtain zero knowledge argument for multiplicative relations with subquadratic communication and also subquadratic uh, computation complexity. Okay, so let me summarize. Um, in this work, we reduce relation for large integers to binary addition with carries. And we prove uh, binary operation with carries in zero knowledge using stern light techniques. Uh, it's allowed to work with small modulus with weak lattice assumption, and uh, our protocol can achieve scalability. Okay, so here are some uh, concrete estimation of the communication cost for our range argument. Uh, X belongs to the range alpha, beta, where alpha, beta are public, okay? So um, uh, for the range size of 1,000, for example, the, the cost of proving uh, range membership is around uh, 0 0.38 megabyte, and the, but the cost for proving uh, valid uh, commit, opening up the commitment is uh, more than three megabytes. And um, it's increased linearly. Um, for example, uh, for the RAN up size 8,000, so the cost of uh, RAN membership already three megabytes, and the total cost is um, uh, from 9.6 megabytes. So it's not, uh, probably not efficient enough to be used in practice. Uh, the main problem here is uh, our each execution of our protocol has a constant soundness, and we have to repeat the protocol many, many times to, to achieve some uh, desirable level of soundness. For example, here we have to replay, re repeat the protocol 137 times to achieve soundness error um, 2 to the power of my, minus 80. Okay, so um, we hope that um, this uh, problem can be uh, improved in, uh, in the near future. So that's all, thank you for your attention.